All right. I guess I'm going to start going through the agenda. First up, we have the 2.2 release. Um, one of the uh, one of the big feature, probably one of the most f things I frequently hear about Prometheus is uh, people being tripped up by sending samples out of order, and this adds experimental support for out of order ingestion of samples which has been a whole bunch of work by a bunch of people who I don't think are on this call, but it's uh, pretty exciting. It's been a long time in the making. Uh, one of the other, uh, other big things has been sort of a, a focus for us these last few months, uh, ease of use. Uh, Marco was actually... Uh, doing a lot of work on this is sort of coming up with a standardized format for errors and giving each error an ID so you can easily look it up in the documentation and figure out, you know, oh, this is what's wrong. This is what I can take to, uh, these are the actions I can take to, uh, to remedy it. Uh, the bucket index prefix. I'm not sure what that feature is. Uh, Dimitar? Did I do I remember correctly that you were working on that, or is that uh, something else? The bucket index. Yeah, bucket index prefix. It's on the uh, agenda, prefix. but I'm not sure what it actually means. Um. Yeah. So that's that allows to use the same bucket to uh, for different components. So for block storage, rulers, and um, Load manager, um, yeah, it basically prefixes all files that these that all components um, upload to the bucket with with the prefix you've configured, so they don't they no longer interfere. I think there was a problem with uh, compactor discovering rules um, and the ruler trying to. run blocks i don't know I'm, I'm not really sure the exact problems but yeah they were yeah was really correctly yeah the, the 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 block storage and the ruler and the other manager storage on the other side um basically have some conflicting prefixes uh if you run with the default configuration so you have basically to store the blocks in the dedicated bucket and then ruler and other manager config uh, either in dedicated buckets or both of them in the same bucket um introducing a prefix for the block storage uh we are able uh, if you set this prefix uh, to some value like for example slash blocks uh, we are able to store blocks ruler and health manager config uh all in the same bucket it's nice a little little less to set up when you're first getting started also some cloud providers have pricing per bucket uh, so for some people, it's actually cheaper to just use one bucket, or at least that's some. That's what some community member claimed. Then next up is a uh, faster ingester rollouts due to uh, wall replay improvements. I think uh, Jesus uh, and maybe Brian worked on that. Yes, and Ganesh a little bit as well. Um, so we found out that there was some logic while doing the replays that um, waited um, longer than usual um, in the loop that replaced the work. And so we reduced um, the waiting time there. And that uh, um, resulted in a nice uh, performance imp <clears throat> improvement. Um, there is actually right now in Prometheus another pull request that's re rewriting the entire code. So like. It's actually removing the the loop that waits and replacing it with a different implementation, making it, I think, a bit more efficient. But that's still being worked out. So, but maybe a, a, another improvement on on this for the future. Very nice. Uh, next up, store gateway performance optimization. Uh, I can go over this. Uh, there are a few improvements to uh, how we use. 
memcache in the store gateway um, that should reduce the number of connections and uh, make things a bit faster. And uh, Steve has a change to the way the store gateway uses mmap that should reduce the uh, frequency of those hangs that people are experiencing when the store gateway becomes entirely unresponsive. And then, uh, Cryo, you want to go over uh, a couple of the Helm chart improvements? Yeah, I'll go over the highlights. I talked about uh, most of this in the previous committee meeting as upcoming. But so Helm is a tool to deploy software on Kubernetes. And we are packaging BIM here for, for Helm tooling. And uh, in that package, we implemented a couple of features. Uh, such as meta monitoring support uh, built in, which means that you can set up your Mimir to monitor uh, itself, its counters, and send them to, for example, Grafana Cloud. Uh, and uh, which means, for example, with the even with the free tier Grafana Cloud uh, account, you can start uh, having your own meta monitoring for your for your Mimir, and uh, which is useful for you know performance management and and fault management meaning you know uh, troubleshooting so that's that's a pretty cool feature um and uh, the other uh, bigger changes uh, that uh, we made improvements to the chart so that you can uh, install it on openshift and uh, that was uh, mainly requested by by enterprise customers um, because it's uh, quite prevalent for uh, especially for like financial institutions and such um, so that's a change and in connection with that we've we've changed how we use memcached we used to uh, kind of integrate it uh, via subchart but that subchart had some uh, issues lately and also it prevented us from from uh, having uh, enough control to do this for OpenShift. So we are now directly managing memcached processes from, from the Mimir Ham chart. Um, then there's improvements to the how we manage configuration. And that was requested a lot of times that uh, we should uh, um, make that easier. Uh, it in the Previous releases of the of the Mimir ham chart, you had to copy the whole uh, configuration uh, from from the preset basically and make modifications, and it was a bit complicated. Plus, that configuration is is a big template basically to support a lot of things, and uh, now you can uh, actually just uh, uh, modify uh, parts of it through a structured way, through like normal YAML, not not a text field. Uh, and also, um, now you can keep that set configuration in a config map instead of a secret, which is useful when you upgrade. You can uh, use uh, Helm diff to actually see what's going to what's going to be changed. Uh, but it also means that um, you know config map is not really meant to, to store uh, secrets and credentials. So the another thing that we turned on is that we we can now expand environment variables in the configuration so you can store your uh, credentials in actual secret or vault or or wherever safe and uh, inject them into the configuration which is a, a nice touch and um, let me see um, yeah another notable change maybe is is that we turned on multi-tenancy by default uh, for oss but uh, we did it in a backward compatible way. So even if you don't supply an org ID header in your API calls, uh, it, it will work and it will go to the anonymous uh, tenant. And uh, let me see if I miss something. There are other uh, smaller improvements and, and fixes, uh, but uh, please console the change look for those I don't want to take up all the time and uh, there was a blog post a little while back you may have noticed that we now open source the graphite and datadog uh, ingestion proxies uh, so this uh, 
this is sort of a follow-up to, I think, something Marco has mentioned that we want uh, Mimir to be a timescale database for uh, all your metrics, no matter what format. And so this is sort of the first step. These The proxies were developed by different teams, uh, so they, they work a little bit differently. Um, and this is really just like an initial get the code out there release, but like it's a, kind of a kind of a huge deal that uh, we can now support uh, Graphite and Datadog metrics with Mimir. It's been, a, it's been a, a long time coming. It's a very frequently requested feature, and I hope people are very excited about it. Yeah, so um, I can add a bit about that as well, because I was part of the uh, squad who was um, basically um, doing this effort to open source these um, things. Um, so yeah, basically we've implemented uh, the datadog slash graphite uh, write APIs. Though in the background, everything's tr translated into Prometheus, and it interacts with Mimir uh, via remote write. Um, yeah, basically making it really low effort to switch to Prometheus um, just by updating agent uh, your like datadog agents and stuff to uh, point. At the proxies, and uh, yeah, as a note, uh, as you mentioned, it is uh, experimental. These um, open, like these open source proxies, um, but we do actually also run them in Grafana Cloud, and they're like production. Uh, basically, they're running production and production ready. Um, that way, it's just that um, the code and config needs a bit more consistency before we we want to before we say the open source version is um, is um, is uh, not experimental anymore um, just because, yeah, because they were developed by different teams, there's like different ways of configuring and stuff and we'd like them to be a lot more consistent, so um, easier to use. Um, also mentioned in the blog post is the Influx proxy, which has been open source for a while, but uh, we've been doing some work on it. Um, it's, it's a similar idea to the Graphite and Datadog stuff, uh, but yeah, eventually we want to just merge them all uh, together and make it uh, more consistent and um, easier to use. Um, yeah. Thanks. Uh, and then there's the blog post about the uh, about the the new uh, write proxies and a blog post. I think that details uh, query sharding, how that was used to speed up uh, query performance up to 10x. I don't know if. Marco, you want to uh, provide some context on that, or should uh, go on to what's next? No, I, yeah, I, I just put uh, these links uh, uh, in the agenda because I think they're both uh, a great blog post um, written by by our team. Um, so yeah, you know, I invite um, everyone to to check it out later. And I. So under what's next, we have OTLP ingestion support that uh, Gotham has been working on for a while. I think that was merged uh, recently, if I'm not mistaken, which is yeah. exciting. So I think Oleg was mentioning that uh, he was trying to do remote write from like a, a small embedded device on his home lab, and it was a bit difficult to work with. So is a very nice format to, to work with. Um, tenant federation on metadata endpoints. It's uh, just supporting mul querying multiple tenants. Uh, something changed in Grafana 9 where like uh, a multi-tenant request to the metadata endpoint the uh, displays an error now, so this just fixes that. Uh, Susanna, you want to go over? the split by interval parallelization? Uh, yes, I can give a bit of context. Yes, so this is basically a part uh, from Loki. Uh, in Loki, we, we did this with instant queries because our uh, range queries only have uh, only had one type of parallelization. Uh, and this is to add a new level of parallelization to the same to the instant query. So basically, we grab the, the range interval of instant queries and split it uh, currently uh, in a static interval, but that may change in the future. This is still experimental. Uh, uh, Marco and Oleg are helping me a lot with, with this and uh, guiding me on the on the best practice from Emir. Uh, 
Um, and yeah, it, the POC, the main POC was already merged, but we are still the, currently working on it. I don't know if Marco, you want to say, to add something else? Uh, yeah, Susanna did a great job. And, uh, and there's actually one reason why I'm very excited about this one. Now, you know, we already support query sharding for instant queries as well. So instant queries are already accelerated by uh, the query shard. Now, splitting by, by time as well, uh, it's just yet another dimension uh, to shard uh, the query. Uh, but since we already support query shard, um, you know, I don't expect a huge performance benefit uh, having uh, the, the split by time as well. The reason why I'm very excited is uh, because uh, splitting by time is the foundation to have the query result support for instant queries as well. Um, if, you, if you take an instant query uh, processing samples uh, over the last one day, for example, and you split it into one hour blocks, um, we could cache uh, all the blocks uh, except the first one and the, and the latest one. So basically every block in between starting from hour one until hour 11. If, uh, the split interval, sorry, if the, the, the query range is 12 hours. Um, to make it happen, first of all, we need to split the query by time, and then uh, we can add uh, the query result caching uh, on top of that. Um, that's what uh, uh, could be you know, a huge differentiator in terms of uh, uh, query performance, <clears throat> especially rule evaluation performance uh, when you run uh, um, an instant query or a rule evaluation over uh, a large um, uh, time window. Very cool. Uh, and then some uh, some smaller improvements and fixes to the Helm chart. I don't know if there's uh, anything you want to add, Cryo, or just move on to QA. Um, not really. This, uh, you know, the next release is, is fast approaching as planned. And uh, I think we did add some breaking changes in, in the current release. So we will give a little rest to people that want to upgrade. And, but in the, I expect to have some bigger changes in the release after the next one for them. All right, and we have reached the open mic uh, or QA section. So if anyone uh, wants to share anything or you have questions, uh, feel free to speak up, please. It looks like there are no questions. Uh, I am I'm super excited about uh, 2.2 and everything that is coming up. I like that there are performance fixes in every new release. That's uh, a refreshing change. Some software seems to get slower uh, every new release. Um, and if nobody has anything else, I guess we can uh, end it early. All right. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Nick. Bye-bye. Thanks.